I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, the Yuggera and Turrbal people, and pay my respects to the, their elders, both past and present. I'd also like to thank them for their wisdom and guidance as we walk in their footsteps and recognise that these lands on which we meet have always been a place of teaching and learning. I'd like to kick off my talk today by greeting you with the welcome word, the hello word, in the Yagara language of the Brisbane region. And I'd like you to respond using that word. Garumba bigai. Not bad. A bit rubbish, but <laughs> not bad. I think it's a fitting greeting because today I'm going to tell you the story of the Indigenous Literacy Foundation of Australia and the important work we are doing in the remote communities of this land to improve the opportunities of young children to become literate. So I'd like to begin back in 2003 when I heard about the shocking statistics for Indigenous literacy, particularly in remote communities. Only one in 10 children were reaching basic literacy levels by the time they left school. One in 10. This is an uncomfortable truth for a lucky country. Australia is a first world country, so how is it possible for these poor literacy statistics to exist? I wasn't sure if I was more shocked by the statistics or by the fact that I hadn't known about them. The silence around them really bothered me. I was confused because it seemed to me that if someone in my position, someone with a background in teaching, someone who was a parent of three young children who were all at various stages of acquiring literacy, someone who owned a bookshop, whose lifeblood was books and reading, if I didn't know about the situation in the remote areas of Australia, then you could probably accept that there was widespread ignorance of the issue. It made me realise that perhaps a lot of us take our literacy for granted. And today I would like you to imagine a life, imagine your life, without books and reading. Imagine having a sick baby and not being able to read the label on the medications. Imagine not being able to read road signs, timetables, maps, recipes, insurance forms, any forms, letters and emails. I'd like to challenge you today to have a go sometime and try a whole day without reading. If you fail, you can fine yourself and pay us. And that'll be great because then you'll know you're helping a child in a remote community. When you think about it, the day you learn to read, the day you are able to decode those black marks on paper, is probably one of the most important educational moments in your life. It's a day when doors open to a whole world of possibilities, to choice. So back then it seemed logical to me that for someone in my position, that maybe someone like me should be doing something practical to help. At first I wanted to do something quite small. <clears throat> I wanted to work with the local schools in my community to raise some money and send books, the tools of literacy, to remote communities, where I knew that there were very few books in homes and communities without bookshops and without public libraries. So I decided, decided to run a Reader's Challenge in a few local schools. Children paid to enter and then they read. And the money raised was used to buy books to send to remote communities. The response from schools back then still astonishes me. Instead of a few schools joining in, the word spread and over 100 schools joined. The second year, over 250 schools joined. In the third year, the project grew from the local to the national, becoming an Australian book industry project and then the Indigenous Literacy Foundation. I'd like to turn now to some of the specifics of how we're working in remote communities. 
There are three strands to our programming. The first is our book supply program. Because of the few books in remote communities and the lack of bookshops and public libraries, we have to date gifted over 150,000 books over 250 communities. These books can travel thousands of kilometres to get to their final destination, and the boxes often arrive covered in a rich layer of red dust. One of our program staff, Cindy Manfong, has already travelled over 35,000 kilometres this year alone. On these trips, she's liaising with elders, teachers, listening and discussing the best ways we can work together. The second strand of our program is called Book Buzz. This is a specific literacy program for naught to five-year-olds, where we gift backpacks of age and culturally appropriate books. Our primary focus is early childhood because we recognise what research tells us, that experience with books in early childhood is absolutely critical for literary success. Literacy success. <laughs> and maybe the best way to tell you about Book Buzz is to tell you what happened in Warburton when we took Book Buzz there. Now, Warburton is 1,050 kilometres west of Alice Springs, about as remote as you can get. The playgroup facilitator there, an extraordinary woman, Anne Schinkfeld, said to us, I'd really like to use your Book Buzz program out here, but what you probably don't realise is that we don't speak English out here. We speak Nandara. Would you translate your books into Nandara? And we said yes, even though none of us spoke Nandara. <laughs> so working very closely with community elders, with the playgroup facilitator and eventually a linguist, we translated our first book into Nandara. It was a book I'm sure you all know very well, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Now, when it was completed, we held a community barbecue where we launched the book. And that was an extraordinary event. The Auntie Beryl read it in Nandara and then in English. And there was so much joy and a few tears because someone had bothered to put their language down. The power of that event wasn't lost on anyone, on anyone and it informed a lot of our future practice. In that community, we've been working for six years now with the, the playgroup facilitator there and the playgroups. We've translated another 14 books into Nadandara and we have had the act actually incredible joy this year of seeing the first, first cohort of kids who have had our books go into year one and have exceptional, exceptional literacy skills. The best they've seen in that community for over 15 years. There is one child who is reading both in Nadandara and, and English. The third strand is our community-initiated book publishing program. And we're very proud to have published 44 books, 11 in first languages, and all recognising the importance of stories from community, giving communities a voice. Publishing these books has been a great joy for us and for, for communities. The process often involves taking some of our country's finest authors, many of whom are our ambassadors, out on field trips, where they run writing, illustration, and sometimes even music workshops. Some of these authors include Andy Griffiths, William Barton, Kate Grenville, Samuel Wagon Watson, Richard Flanagan, and many others. One of the books we've published came about when we took Australian children's author Alison Lester to the Tiwi Islands, where she worked with the children from Millicuppity to create the most beautiful story. The community elders asked if the story could be written in both in a combination of the English and Tiwi languages. The important words of the story are in Tiwi, and in many ways, a book like this provides a bridge between two cultures. I was present when Alison ran this workshop, 
and it was such a privilege to watch her draw this story out from the children. The playful spirit of the story came straight from the kids. And I'm now going to honour you with a little bit of a reading of that book. It's called No Way Irakape, which is obviously crocodile, hope you can all see. Irakape was hungry, so he went hunting. He surprised the Darakalani on the reef, but the Darakalani said, no way, Irakape, you're not eating me today. I have a hard shell. It will make you unwell. He went for a Goluwaringa in the shallows, but the Goluwaringa said, No way, Irakape, you're not eating me today. The spear in my tail will cause you to wail. Irakape was getting hungrier and hungrier. He chased a Manu Wanini, Wanini on the reef, but the Manu Wanini said, No way, Yerikape, you're not eating me today. My whiskery nose will tickle your toes. He lunged at an Andaringa on the, near the shore, but the Andaringa said, No way, Yerikape, you're not eating me today. I'm far too jelly to be in your belly. He chased a Kirampika through the mangroves, but the Kirampika said, No way, Yerikape, you're not eating me today. I'm too quick and snappy. I'll make you unhappy. Yerikape was sick of chasing troublesome creatures through the ocean, so he headed inland. He found a Jaranganini in the mud, but the Jaranganini said, No way, Yerikape, I'm too tough and strong. I'll make you feel wrong. He nearly caught a Naranari just past the swamp, but the Naranari said, No way, Yerikape, you're not eating me today. I'm too loud and honky. I'll make you feel wonky. <laughs> Finally, Yerikape grabbed a huge Daringa under a log. He thought he had his dinner, but the Daringa coiled around him, squeezed tight and said, no way, Yerikape, you're not eating me today. I'm hungry too, so I'm eating you. <laughs> <laughs> and the Darakaringa ate Yerikape up. <laughs> When I was learning the Tiwi words in this story, I struggled with the pronunciations, which are written phonetically, so you can have a go yourself. When I went up to Tiwi for the launch, a little boy was trying to help me with the pronunciations, and he just couldn't get why I wasn't getting it. And he said, open your mouth. <laughs> I opened my mouth and he looked his eye and he said, what's that grey stuff in there? Oh, no. I ate too many lilies when I was a kid. And uh, when we had the, the official launch, he shouted out, she's not getting the words quite right because she's got this black stuff in her mouth. <laughs> so it was, all, it was all a little embarrassing. But the point of that story was that I was realising how untalented linguistically I was. Tina Ray, our program coordinator, has taken this book to lots of other indigenous communities where they don't speak Tiwi, but the kids pick up the words incredibly, incredibly quickly. And what we find in nearly all the communities we work in is that the kids nearly all speak three, four or five languages, English being the last one, and they do have this extraordinary talent with language. I'd like to conclude by showing you some of the images of the places and the children with whom we work. These pictures were taken in Warburton, which is, as I said before, is 1,050 kilometres west of Alice Springs. They were also taken in the Tiwi Islands, which lie in the Arafura Sea, just north of Darwin, in Yakanara, which is in the Kimberleys, and in Jawan country, which is east of Catherine. They're all very remote places. Tina Ngolo 
I hope you noticed the mums very engaged in those pictures too with their kids. Supporting them with their literacy is also a very important part of our work. And the music you could hear in the background was from the wonderful and revered Indigenous musician, Geoffrey Garamul Yunapingu. For my closing comments, I'd like to say when our foundation visits remote communities, we're deeply moved by the beauty of the country, the people, their gentle spirits, and their sometimes insanely brilliant laughs. We've been astonished by their linguistic talents, but we are dismayed by the deadly serious struggles they have to survive. Literacy is a human right, and as a country, I am sure we can do much better for children living in remote communities. We need to try harder, and we have to work together to make it possible. We know that education is a pathway out of disadvantage. This is a long road that the Indigenous Literacy Foundation is on, but it's a very important one. It's still early days, and we're still a small organisation, but we believe we will steadily grow as the word spreads, and those who value their own literacy come on board to support our work. So if you can't imagine your life without books and reading, please join us and help us give the gift of reading to those who need it most. Thank you. Thank you.